Since Google Anti-Gravity came out, I've been testing it non-stop so I could create a full tutorial for you. But while I was experimenting, I stumbled on a workflow I've never seen in any AI agent and I haven't seen one YouTube video talk about it. Responsive testing. If you build web apps, you know the pain. You must make your UI responsive for every screen size, desktop, tablet, mobile, and most developers still test it manually, which means endless resizing, reloading, and checking breakpoints, a massive waste of time. So let's skip the fluff and jump right in. As you know, I built alldevneeds.com, a bunch of daily tools for developers. During one of my tests, I ran the site locally and asked Antigravity to check its responsiveness on desktop, tablet, and mobile. And yes, ignore the spelling mistakes, Antigravity is very forgiving. Then, it told me to install the Antigravity browser extension, which lets the IDE connect to Chrome and control it. At this point, I wasn't surprised. Cursor can control the browser, Playwright MCP can control the browser, nothing crazy. But then, it happened. The AI agent started automatically resizing the browser, switching between every screen size I requested, and generating a step-by-step -step walkthrough. And the final result? A full responsiveness review of my website, with scrolling, transitions, and a screen recording of every breakpoint. That's awesome, but I wanted to take it to the next level. So I asked Antigravity to focus on a single page, JSON formatter, and test its functionality across all screen sizes. And again, it generated tests for that page on every breakpoint. This time, it didn't just check responsiveness, it actually tested the functionality of the page on desktop, tablet, and mobile. As far as I know, this workflow doesn't exist in any other AI agent today. Even Cursor 2.0 can't yet resize the browser like this, which is exactly what allows Antigravity to get these results. But it wasn't all perfect. Along the way, I ran into a few issues that are worth mentioning. First, there were quite a lot of errors. At least four times I got this one. Usually, when I just sent another prompt, the issue was resolved. The second thing, I started running the responsiveness task in planning mode. But despite the name, it doesn't just plan. It executes, it modifies your code, and it does a lot more behind the scenes than you'd expect. But that's not even the worst part. Every single prompt took forever to run. Even when I switched to faster models, Sonnet 4.5, without thinking, or Gemini Low, the execution time was still painfully slow. So yeah, I really hope these issues get fixed because this workflow has so much potential. If Antigravity can make this stable, it could become a legit developer superpower. Let me know what you think about this video. It was more like documenting my process and less like a structured tutorial. I'm curious if you want more videos like this. Check out these videos to improve your workflows.